Oh, we're live. Whoa! We are live, Patrick. I started the live stream. Huh? It's 6.53. So I figured I would just put it on and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing on this fine Sunday evening? Um, a little nervous. A little? We bet. I feel like I should be more nervous than I am because my lack of nerves kind of tells me that I'm bound to be disappointed. Oh, I feel like I'm going to be disappointed. I feel like I'm going to be disappointed. But what is disappointment in this scenario? You know, Not that's making it. So that's the only disappointment, not making it at all. Because if BU is a four seed, I think it's a little bit of a slap in the face, but I would take it. I wouldn't be disappointed with being a four seed. Not making it would be the ultimate failure. A slap in the face would be they have to go to Fargo. <laughs> that's a good point. If they're assigned to Loveland, Colorado, then that's a slap in the face to us, obviously. But so wait, where are the West good. Regionals? Loveland, Colorado, and Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Albany, New York are the other two. So, uh, right. yeah. Cautiously optimistic is the word to describe it, as has feels like been the word to describe a lot of BU hockey this year, for better or worse. You know, it's kind of mm -hmm. it's how we viewed the women's program a little bit, losing so many players and uh, and thinking that they would still be okay. We were like, ah, yeah, they'll fill in the gaps. It didn't exactly happen. No, do not. Um, so we'll find out. I think. Uh, what do we got going on there? I just got the ESPN U stream going. You did? Oh, I got to do that. I'm putting together a little thumbnail for the people. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. It's just Patrick and I tonight, by the way. Previous this stream. Georgia Tech Austin game gets over in five minutes. Is it not gonna? Huh? You think it's gonna finish five minutes? It's like 47 seconds left in OT. And we know how long bas the final minute of basketball can go. Yeah. All right. Well, Austin has two timeouts, Georgia Tech has one. And they're separated by two points, so it's a close. This will not be over by 7 o'clock. <laughs> I bet they'll cut to it. NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament, Men's Hockey Selection Show. So what do they do? I don't know. Can you postpone it? Hmm? I don't know what they're going to do. Boy, we're... Unless there's a way to directly stream it and not tune into ESPNU. Well, no, it's, it has to be ESPN. I mean, that's how everybody's watching it, TV or online like us. So we'll just go with the flow. We'll go along with it. Well, 19 seconds left. San Francisco, uh, SF Austin just called timeout. They'll make it. Let me get down two. So if they make a bucket, they're instantly calling timeout. Hope they don't. Here's the broadcast. Here we are. ESPN HD. Love that. Hello. And immediately got a foul, so be patient. Where was that? Oh, what was that? Try again. That only slightly violates, violates copyright. We uh we cut it off after seven seconds, Patrick. We're fine. But yeah, that, that probably violates a lot of copyright things. You are correct about that. Give me one moment, please. I'm back. 
Nice. Yeah. We got loud cars outside. Close the door. My Twizzlers. I'm down with two Twizzlers after this one. Uh oh. Gonna have to ration them. You're gonna have to ration the Twizzlers, that's for sure. We got two viewers at the moment. I hope they uh, reach out to us in the comments. Maybe they already have. I just don't know it. We should uh, me out the link as well, Patrick. I mean, what are we doing here? I thought you were doing that. I'll do it right now. Let's go. What? No, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. This girl on SF Austin thinks she hit the buzzer beater to tie it. And she didn't get off in time. No way. But they're going to the tape. <laughs> on the floor, the basket is no good. I got one minute to figure this out. No, she did not get it off. There we are. All righty. Tweet is done. Thumbnail's done. 6.59. Hopefully the basketball game's almost done. Uh, yeah, they just called it no basket. No basket. Game so over. So now it depends on how much uh, – I guess it wouldn't be preamble, but how much uh, ESPN rambles on about this. Oh. What? Rambles on. Uh, that was a negative connotation. <laughs> oh. You know what I mean. I do know what you mean. The stream is being a problem. It keeps playing the audio, but I think I fixed it. I think we're about ready to go. While we wait, why don't we talk a little bit about what we expect to happen so that we can look back at it and know that that's not what happened because it's just inevitable that we're not going to get it right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So we got our six auto bids. That's correct. Now These down to five, actually. Well, Quinnipiac gets the auto bid technically. Fair, fair. Right? St. Lawrence, and that, that changes the whole thing, right? Because one team gets in, one extra team. That, that, I think that takes Hockey East back to four teams. I agree. I think Hockey East gets a fourth team in there, hoping for that anyway. Because otherwise it would be, let's see. The expectation, we'll go through the list here. The auto bids went to UMass from Hockey East, American International from Atlantic Hockey, Quinnipiac from ECAC, North Dakota from NCHC, right? Minnesota from the Big Ten. All right, here we go. I'm Lake starting. Superior from the WCHA. Those are the six auto bids. Yep. Here's the uh, the crew. It's John Buchagras, who looks older and older every time you see him. But I think it's gone gray real quick. I know, but I think he's like I think he's trying to pull it off. Is the thing like I think it's intentional. He's very in shape, so he makes it. Work. Oh, he's. And he's, you know, he's young as ever. Dave Starman, Starman, also on the show. We can't live stream the show, obviously, but we're going to talk you through it, and hopefully you have it on also on ESPN+. Plus. So I talked There's about those trophy. auto bids. They're telling us a 16-team field, obviously. Every tournament has had 16 teams since 20, no, 2003. Um, they're going to be sent to four regions, and uh, they can't use the pairwise this time. Every single year, this is why it's interesting, by the way, every year, they use the pairwise, which is just calculations about ranking teams. You know, the, the most objective way to do it. It's awesome. Computer. It's awesome. Computer. But you can't do it this How year. long has the pairwise been around? Oh, boy. Let's I have no idea. Me. That's a really good question. Um, but they can't use it this year, so they went old school, basketball style. The, just, this, the uh, you know, the committee makes the decisions. They're showing us uh, St. Lawrence knocked out. And then all ECAC situation was a total mess where they only had four teams competing. It was a two game playoff, basically St. Lawrence upset Colgate and then 
Quinnipiac being the bigger one, obviously, in overtime, both games, to earn the ECAC auto bid. But then they had a COVID test come out positive. Apparently, it was the coach himself came out saying it earlier today. So uh, they are out, um, which, like we just said, opens things up a little bit. You look down the list, and so here's my, if you're curious, Patrick, I've got my rankings I went through while I was trying to piece together my own bracket, and I ranked the teams in order. So I had North Dakota first. Um, they were, you know, basically one or two the entire year. I had Boston College second, their current number one, uh, and they've been at, right there the whole time. Minnesota, who won the Big Ten, uh, they've been up around the top as well. And then I put Wisconsin, who finished second in the Big Ten, had a nice run at the end, great record. I think those are pretty clearly the top four. But then you have a couple interesting ones with UMass, who obviously won Hockey East, hasn't lost since January, had a bit of a pause, but have come back red hot. Uh, and then Minnesota State, who also had a, a strong uh, season, very strong, but uh, were knocked out early in the playoffs. So I think that hurts them a little bit. Um, my other two seeds, St. Cloud State, as always, very good. But Patrick thinks they're going to be out in the, the first round, as always. And then I also had no, 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 not the first round, but early literally the anywhere that isn't a championship. Yeah, that's just how it goes for them. Um, They've made – keep talking. I'll try and find how many years in the last, like, six years St. Cloud State has made the tournament and, yeah. and how many times they've made the Frozen Four. Their Wikipedia should have season-by-season season results, so. They have made the tournament. Oh, he's got it. They made it six out of um, seven seasons from 2013 to 2019. The only year they missed was 2017. Of that run, they made it to the Frozen Four once in 2013, and they lost. Yeah, that's bad. Prior to 2013, they had not made the Frozen Four once, and they had made it a total of one, two, four, five, six, seven times since 2000, and an additional one in 89. Well, we have our first pick, Patrick. North Dakota is the number one seed in Fargo. Oh, you're way ahead of me. Am I? Yeah. We have our first seed in Albany. Boston Where are you College. streaming this? I'm streaming it on uh, Xfinity, the Xfinity stream. God damn it, Verizon. Sorry. Um, BC takes the number one seed in Albany. I had them to go to Bridgeport, but same difference. Um, two pretty much home teams at this point. Minnesota gets the third number one seed in Loveland, Colorado. That was uh, another one that I agreed with. Minnesota being the first seed out there at 23 and six in addition to that championship. And uh, let's see what the fourth number one seed is, assuming they show us here. This is kind of the questionable one, and it's going to be Wisconsin. Wisconsin headed to Bridgeport. Wow. So that's a little interesting because we know it's pretty safe to assume they're kind of localizing it this year. That's what we're seeing a little bit around, you know, other NCAA. Like they're trying to keep it as minimal travel as possible. And so it's understandable you've got. North Dakota staying in Fargo, BC staying, you know, pretty close with, uh, with Albany, you know, it all makes sense. But then Wisconsin coming across to Bridgeport, which is a hefty travel there for the Badgers. I'm curious about how it's going to end up. Well, I mean, they'd have to travel regardless from Wisconsin to bridge to Fargo or, um, That's true. They'd be on Lublin, the and it's not exactly a bus trip to either of those for Wisconsin. That's a good point. So Maybe. it's just a, how long they're on the flight and, you know, just be smart, wear your mask. Um, mm. Maybe they could do a bus. They could technically, I guess, do a bus to Fargo, but that is far from Madison. Far. Um, it's far to Fargo. Um, probably be like us trying to go to Pittsburgh. It'd actually be like, yeah, eight hours on the bus. That's doable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nothing crazy about those. As I just said, those were my top four as well. Yeah. There were point there were like you could make cases for UMass and Minnesota State. Um, but you give Wisconsin and Minnesota the edge just because of their strong postseason success. Um, and then North Dakota and BC were easy. But then the twos is where it gets interesting. Um I mean, I just said UMass and Minnesota State. I think those are guaranteed too. But then I have St. Cloud State, who I would have to double check what they're going what the heck did they already put the fargo region out there they're doing it now aic oh my goes god to, oh my god forget your uh forget our east west guess yeah. <laughs> michigan wow. is two in fargo 
Did they mean to put that up? Minnesota Duluth to Fargo. Wow. Oh, here we go. AIC. No getting in. What is one of they doing now, Loveland? They're doing Albany with Notre Dame getting in at the four seed, St. Cloud State the two seed. Screw the regional thing. Boston University is the third seed in Albany. BU and St. Cloud State in the first round in Albany. It's, it is my entire reputation rides on that game. <laughs> oh my God, my, it does. My entire reputation rides on that game. Yes, Patrick, known to be saying that St. Cloud State chokes every time. We'll find out. BU meeting with St. Cloud in Albany. Oh, my God. And if you win that one, chances are you're playing against BC. <laughs> I'll talk about rivalries, too, for BC, by the way. They have Notre Dame one night and then potentially BU the next night. In Albany. We'll be making a trip to New York, potentially, Patrick. I hope so. Let's go. Fire off your tweets, Patty. They didn't really make us sweat it out. They did not, which I love. I just wanted to rip the bandit off, get it over with, find out. Wow. I'm surprised. Um, I have no idea what Bridgeport's going to look like now. Maybe I do. I take that back. No, I do. Because... We talked about regionalizing, right? But there are significantly more tournament um, quality teams in the West than the East. And so we have St. Cloud and Notre Dame both coming across to the East in Albany. We have Wisconsin coming across in Bridgeport. But those are three teams there. You have five other East teams, potentially, with what I just said, AIC, BU, BC, ECAC is going to be Quinnipiac, and then UMass. So I think we just had BC, BU, AIC. I think we'll see Wisconsin, UMass, Quinnipiac. Trying to blank on the last one. Did they give us that one yet? No, they only did the two regionals. Well, we could piece it together. They're going to commercials. They're going to commercials now, Wendy's. Yeah. Um, Wisconsin was the one seed in Bridgeport. And that means UMass will be the two seed in Bridgeport. Money moves right there. Thinking about it. And Quinnipiac will be the three, right? I think that their loss to St. Lawrence pushes them to a three seed rather than a two. And so who's your four seed there? I mean, it's anyone's guess. Is it a Providence or a UConn squeaking? And is it somehow Army? I don't think so. I don't think it's any of those. I think they probably go with like a Bemidji state or uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like a, an Omaha there. Maybe they send another one of those West teams out East. Um, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I'm surprised with a Notre Dame pick. I am too. I'll have to, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Notre Dame this season, 14, 13, and 2. Big 10, it's good as always, right? Strong competition. Uh, not an incredible playoff run, though. Okay, they just made it to the Big 10 first round. They were beaten by Penn State. Underdogs in that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that they should have beaten Penn State, too. I, I think Penn State was under 500 going into the Big 10 tournament. I don't know about that pick. I can only imagine they were the last one in for um, SLU dropping out. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Just got confirmation from a uh, friend of the show, Matt Wolverton. Says that there is a team watch party right now for BU. Content. I mean, you have to figure. You have to figure. Well, you you never know. Like, we got the boys didn't go nuts. Got a couple subtle clapping moments. Bring the energy.
Huh. Man, what do we know about uh about St. Cloud? <laughs> they mean, choke every year. My entire reputation rides on this. Um yeah. Um oh. Oh, we're back. Omaha headed Loveland. to Loveland. Okay, I said Omaha would get in. That was my guess. I think the fourth hockey East team is screwed, Patrick. I have to say that. Minnesota State is this two seed there. And then the three seed, if I had to guess, oh, Quinnipiac. What? <laughs> uh, Patrick's all over the place, by the way. I just got a text from him that says it's, uh, it's not pretty. He's frozen on our screen. Well, hopefully he joins us again soon. Minnesota, Minnesota State, Quinnipiac, and Omaha. Holy crap. There goes Patrick. Then, then there was one. Hopefully things work out. Bridgeport, Connecticut, by the way. Bemidji State gets that fourth seed. Told you that one. And then Massachusetts is the two. Lake Superior State is the three. A lot of people had Lake Superior being a number four. I thought they deserved three. They had a great record, and they won their tournament. What else can you expect? So I think they deserve the three. I like those picks a lot. Um, and in Bridgeport, too, which is interesting. So what did they do? They moved AIC out to Colorado. And no, out to Fargo. And then they moved um, Quinnipiac out to Colorado, right? I'm Hi, back. Patrick. Welcome back. Yeah, my Glad computer just spazzed out for a second and like reset itself. Don't know what's up, but we're back. UMass getting into Bridgeport. There's, um, that Bridgeport regional is uh, interesting. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. Lake Superior, Bemidji, um, Wisconsin, and UMass. Yeah. This is ne- is this happening next week? He's get- he's gone again. By the way. That's too bad. So I think we know the entire bracket now, by the way. I think uh, I think we know what's happening here. Hopefully they like tweet it. I'd love that. Let's see, NCAA ice hockey, what do we got? Selections are tonight. Nope, not helpful. I'd love to know. I would love to know, but I don't. So hopefully someone has sent it out. We got video of VU um, celebrating, by the way, just sitting there clapping. I'm just putting out my own tweet, by the way, in case you're curious. Follow me, Brady D. Gart on Twitter. Um, Meanwhile, what's going on with the selection show? I mean, not very much. I think it might be over, to be honest. We're talking to some guy who looks very important. He says, uh, he's got a background. It says Maverick Hockey. That's Minnesota. And so state, right? <laughs> so, hmm. I wish I knew what was going on. I believe the field is complete. I'd love to give you more thoughts on it. Here we are. Thankfully, good friends over at College Hockey News seem to have posted everything. Um, let's 
So I'll run through that in just a moment. We're back. Hello. Apple's really testing my audio or my, my patience. <laughs> all righty. Let's, uh, let's read this out here, Patrick. We have all the final uh, divisions all put together. So mm -hmm. East first. We have in Albany, we've already discussed a little bit, Boston College against Notre Dame. Thoughts on that matchup? Um, I really like it just from an entertain entertainment perspective because outside of Hockey East, Northeast, or Notre Dame is BC's biggest rival. Um, former Hockey. Former Hockey East. Um, but I I don't know. I think it's, it's hard to judge how – these are going to shake out because none of these teams have seen each other. Usually Northeastern and BC have had a, or not Northeastern. I don't know why I keep saying that. Notre Dame and BC have had a series because they have one every year normally, normally, but I mean, BC, it's, it's hard to say that they're going to roll over and die at Notre, against Notre Dame. They're the top seed for a reason. Mm -hmm. And Notre Dame, it feels like barely snuck into this. Right. I think that's what I, is the clearest thing to me. Because they get BC, right? BC was pretty much the, the number one team going into the tournament. Um, Notre Dame pretty obviously is the last team to come in. They were, as of noon today, Notre Dame probably was not anywhere close to being in this tournament. Well, obviously they were close. They got the next spot. But I don't think they were expected to be in it if St. Lawrence was still in. I think that would have been St. Lawrence, right? Take the worst team taking on BC the best. But instead yeah. it's Notre Dame, the next bubble team to come in. And uh, I don't know what differentiates them from a Providence, a UConn. Providence didn't have many quality wins. UConn was below 500. No below 500 teams, by the way. In the I mean, to be honest, I don't think Providence or UConn really deserve to get in. Yeah, I would agree with that, too. Um, I mean, it's easy for me to say <laughs> yeah, here a prop we are. being in the tournament. Um, but just mediocrity from Providence under 500 from UConn. I just didn't see it. That's right. Um, so BC, Notre Dame, and then of course St. Cloud State, BU. Testing takes, testing wills. I don't know the last time BU played St. Cloud State. I don't have to do some digging before our uh, BU hockey show podcast. That's exciting though, and I really like. I did want to see someone new, you know, because we've seen some of these teams. Well, obviously the hockey East teams, but we had Quinnipiac last year, two years, I think two years ago. You know, we, we've seen teams like that that there was a potential of us getting. And it's kind of nice to get someone from the West Coast. It's That's time it. to get some like someone we've ne we'd never see because it's interesting. Yeah. It's more interesting because um, usually BU seeing a couple ECAC teams every year. Um, That's right. But I, think, I don't know, yeah. like because especially from the WCHA and like the NCHC, those type of teams, those are like really exciting teams that we never see. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. And then, um, you know, it's not going to be an easy out. I mean, they had a deep playoff run and um, eventually lost in that championship game. So it's not easy at all for BU. Uh, it could be worse, obviously. BU getting the three seed instead of a four. So there was some respect there for the Terriers, and I agree with that third seed. Um, I agree. So that's, the, that's, the, uh, that's Albany. Let me know if anything sticks out to you. Though. We don't need to go terribly in-depth to some of these. Maybe we will on our podcast. Who knows? Yeah, we also have um, Albie coming up in nine minutes. Yes, that's right. I'll be talking with the media. Nine minutes. I'm, I'll be on that too. Why not? Um, the other one, Bridgeport, Connecticut, is uh, Wisconsin taking on Bemidji State, Massachusetts against Lake Superior. Pretty good games there. I don't know a ton about Lake Superior or Bemidji, obviously. But we'll see. I mean, that one's a, a real wild card. You got you know, a bunch of different leagues represented through that. So all time – BU and St. BU has played St. Cloud State once. They are they had one win. They won five to three. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Not a ton of history. No Should've history. Been. Yeah. Um, Colorado. I know exactly when this game happened. Yes, Colorado Regional. Um, we have Minnesota against Omaha, Minnesota State against Quinnipiac. So we could have a battle of the Minnesota teams there, um, which isn't as big as like a BCBU, but, you know, pretty significant, obviously, out in the state of Hawaii. Um, 
I'd love to give Quinnipiac a chance in that one, but Minnesota State is a very good team. And Quinnipiac just lost to St. Lawrence, so I don't know quite about that one. The last thing is, uh, is Fargo, North Dakota, the home team, North, uh, North Dakota State, taking on American International. Good luck with that one. And uh, Michigan against Minnesota Duluth, and that might be the best game of the whole thing. That's a, that's a battle there. Isn't that um, – are those both um, Big Ten teams? Say it again. The teams. Michigan and Duluth. No, never mind. Michigan is Big Ten. Duluth, Duluth is, MCHC. is MCHC. Minnesota is Big Ten, not Duluth. So the, the regular Minnesota. Interesting. So we have some good points here as we scroll through Twitter a little bit. BU and BC, the only two at-large bids from the East, like at all. Atlantic, ECAC, Hockey East, just BU and BC. Stinks for a Providence and a UConn, you know. Uh, but like you said, Patrick, it's just that they didn't really, they didn't quite have the resume. No. Which is too bad. I mean, they were and right thank there. Thank God we're going back to the pairwise next year, so I don't have to see coaches begging for their teams to get in. Oh, so nice to not have Jen Brunet, like Bowling Green. Some of these teams that were just like, come on, fellas. Um, and it's nice to not have to keep worrying about this, like keep thinking about it. Yeah. So. In the rearview mirror now, we'll have much more analysis, of course, on um, on WTBU, on our podcast, on our Twitters. Find all that stuff through uh, at WTB Sports on Twitter. Patrick is at PatDon12. I'm at Brady D. Gardner. And I think that'll do it for today's live stream, Patrick. I believe I it will. Consider a success. I would say so, aside from my technical difficulties. Well, you know, it worked out. So It happens. <laughs>